Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition is The Adventures of Dino Ricky, brought to us by Hudson Soft. Dino Ricky is a pretty unique scrolling vertical shooter where you control a caveman who's going through level after level, taking out all kinds of prehistoric and giant animals. And while very much arcade-like, Dino Ricky actually isn't a port of an arcade game. While Dino Ricky is one of those games that keeps going over and over again through the levels looping, I'll only be playing for the first set of levels during this run. And even then though, it can be extremely tough to get through these set of levels. It's taken me quite a few years to finally get a run of Dino Ricky that I can be proud of. So here we go with the adventures of Dino Ricky for the NES. As you can see, you play as Dino Ricky and he starts off with a fireball move and we'll be able to get upgrades as we go on. You can destroy flowers in order to get diamond power-ups which end up giving you higher score. When you pick up a fist upgrade, you can then throw a more powerful weapon. You have two hearts or two bits of damage you can take before you end up losing a life. Also, when you do get hit though, you also end up losing your upgrade. You grab heart pieces in order to get another hit point added to your hit meter, as well as you can also pick up speed upgrades to make you move faster. Like in most shooters, these are pretty much essential to help you out while playing through the game so that you'll be able to avoid fire from enemies and be able to traverse the areas a little bit easier. The thing that makes Dino Ricky so hard is not only the mass amount of enemies that are attacking you as you can clearly see already in the first stage, it's also that the game includes a jumping mechanic that you'll have to use in order to jump from platform to platform. And with all the speed upgrades which are pretty much essential, it takes a lot of time and practice to get the jumps right. One other key thing you can grab though is the bomb item that ends up destroying all enemies currently on screen. This is represented though when you have a full amount of upgrades, the fire upgrade, you can then pick up another upgrade which will destroy all the enemies. For the most part, just like all shooters, it really comes down to practice and playing the game over and over again to learn where all the spawns and all the enemies work. Thankfully though, throughout the game, you do get checkpoints. You don't pick up right where you left off, but there are quite a few checkpoints in each stage so that when you do lose a life, you can pick up relatively close to where you left off. Of course though, however, you do start with the very minimum amount of upgrades that you start off with in the game. One extra and very cool upgrade is the wings, the dove wings. This upgrade will allow you to float for a period of time, allowing you to get over pitfalls a lot easier. Here is probably our first really tricky area where we have to jump from lily pad to lily pad, including lily pads that will be sinking underwater. This is really a great opportunity to use the dove wings we recently picked up in order to fly over a majority of this area. They last a long amount of time, and this way you can pretty much get over this entire lake of water before they end up running out. Obviously the fire upgrade is the best weapon in the game, and since it fires in a very cool spread pattern, it covers a large chunk of the screen, about three-fourths of the entire screen are covered by its projectile. Usually I like to hang out at the bottom or middle of the screen at most. This gives me a better opportunity to see most of the enemies coming at me. Usually the only time I'll run up to the top of the screen is to grab some upgrades for my weaponry or pick up a thing of health real quick. I find the best and easiest way to get used to the jumping is either jumping and not pressing any directional button once you've already made the jump to the pad, or jump to the pad or wherever you're jumping to and then immediately press back slightly. That way you do a couple of small back steps but you have to be very careful that you don't back step too far that you end up falling into a pit or water or whatever it happens to be in that stage. Thankfully though, if you're able to pick up a lot of the health upgrades throughout the levels, you can have a good amount of hit points going into the next level. Here we have our first boss of the game. This pterodactyl can be a little bit of a pain, however his projectiles move rather slowly. Move back and forth with the speed upgrades that we have and keep firing your fireball. Thankfully it's a very good and introductory boss, so you shouldn't have too much trouble taking him out and we can move on to the next level of the game. 
there's only four stages in the game. Each of the first three stages have a different setting. As you can see, the first one was a jungle, and this one's kind of a ruined level. However, the fourth stage of the game is actually broken up into four segments, where each of the previous segments before the boss battle are actually bits and pieces of a jungle level, this level, and then the third level that we'll be going to next. It's clearly and easily the hardest level in the game, and there's really no checkpoints to help you out throughout it. This desert-like level does have a few more hazards than the jungle level had. As you can see, you have sand traps that will open up, so be very careful that you're not standing over them when they do open up. Another big hazard is these giant statues that'll be on the left and right sides, and you'll have to get in between them as they fire out giant waves of fire. I also find it best since there's so many projectiles coming at you that, that you just keep attacking at all times. As you can see, even with me consistently firing my fireball, I still ended up getting hit by one of those flying rocks. Thankfully though, there was another weapon upgrade very close by. Be very careful here getting between the statues because of the extra speed we have. Thankfully though, there's a good opening you have to get past at least two of the statues, so you only have to wait in between the top and the second of the statues in order for the last flame to go by so you can sneak up to the top. There is, thankfully, a good variety of enemy types, but they only have a few types of motions, usually the ones that are going to be flying straight towards you pretty quickly, especially these rock enemies. You'll have the more slowly maneuvering type enemies that you can see with these purple guys on the screen. And then you have the ones that'll fly at you either in a pattern, or the ones that will fly a little bit, stop, and then fly in your general direction, stopping again and trying to change up their direction in order to finally make contact with you. When you make it to this segment, you'll have a choice of going either the left or right path. I'm going to go to the right path, there. I think there's a few better upgrades over here, but it really makes no difference. Just be careful if you choose the left side that you don't fall down to the sand pit. You'll now have a big stretch of not only flying rocks at you, but a series of those statues as well, so be very careful and take your time trying to master the control the best you can to make it through. At the end of this area though, it's time for the next boss battle, so hopefully you're able to maintain most of your weapon upgrades. Our next boss is the T-Rex boss. Stay mainly at the bottom of the screen, attacking him as much as possible. Since we have a spread shot, we can actually stand a little bit to the left or right of him and still be able to do damage to him. Do not stand directly in front of him when he's low to the bottom of the screen, that way you don't get hit by the projectiles. However, when he's up at the top of the screen, keep firing, you should be able to destroy the projectiles even when he shoots them out. Once you take him out though, we move on to the third level of the game. This weird kind of deserted Deathland Mint level is the third stage of the game and the toughest so far. The skull enemies that are introduced in this level can get quite annoying as they move in a circular pattern around the screen. Just do your best to try to avoid the very bottoms and tops of the screen while they're circling around and attack them when they get directly in front of you. Another weird thing is the smoke clouds that come out of the volcanoes. They move a little bit slowly, so be careful while taking them out. The toughest enemy so far in the game, though, is these black orbs. They circle really quickly around you, and you'll have to attack quickly, so you can destroy them all as they slowly circle and get closer and closer to you before they actually make contact with you. If you're quick enough, you'll be able to destroy them all before they're actually able to hit you. 
Thankfully, the previous level didn't have a whole lot of platforming, but it definitely make up for it during this stage. I find it interesting that the actual character model for Dino Ricky was modeled after a very famous Japanese wrestler, Ricky Choshu. Not sure exactly why they decided to make a caveman type character based on him, but as a cool little thing and being a huge fan of pro wrestling, I find it amusing. Be very careful here making your short jumps over these pits, and then take out the purple skeletons. When you hit them, they end up falling apart, and then they'll rebuild themselves and try to attack you again. The only way to get rid of them fully is by getting a destroy all item. Also throughout the level, as you've been noticing, there are these skeletons in the ground that will wake up and start marching across the screen. They aren't able to be killed, so just get out of the way and don't be just standing directly in front of them when they charge out at you. Make sure that you're in the center of the screen when you have to deal with those two skeletons, and right here you'll have two right in the middle, so be either in between them or on the far left or right sides. I recommend taking out the black orbs before you attempt to make it over the pit. Having less enemies on screen, it's definitely at least a little bit easier to focus on your jumping. Here is probably the trickiest jump in the level, if not the game itself. Just be very careful because you have a very small platform to jump to, and I usually like to make it as quick as possible so the screen doesn't have too much time to scroll and end up causing me to fall into the pit. After making it over one more pit, it's time for the next boss battle of the game. After a few seconds, this giant cobra will appear. He'll be in the center of the screen to start off, so immediately keep attacking him. Then, he'll disappear and reappear at another spot on the screen. Stand right next to him, just a little bit slightly off from directly center, and keep firing your fireballs in order to destroy the projectiles that he fires out slowly, and to do a considerable amount of damage to him. He ends up being actually pretty easy as long, of course, as you have the max power-up going into the battle. Without it, the battle can definitely be a lot tougher. Once he's defeated though, we move on to the fourth and final stage of the game. But like I previously mentioned, it's actually broken up into several parts. Starting off with a rematch against the jungle area of the first stage of the game. And it's definitely tougher than the first time around, as there's more disappearing and reappearing lily pads for you to be platforming on as you try to make your way through these very small islands trying to get to the end of the area. Just do your best and take as much time as you need to on each lily pad, but be careful that it doesn't accidentally sink on you. Making sure that you're on ones that stay solid is your best opportunity to wait for the screen to slowly scroll by before you attempt to make your running jumps. There are some tight areas here, and since your projectiles can't destroy the forest area around you, it can be really tough to destroy the large amount of enemies that are going to be attacking you, so you'll probably take at least a hit or two as you're making your way through this area. There's a ton of these little fish ponds that will have some enemies spawning from them, as you're also trying to make your maneuvers around each and every one of them. Even with all the speed upgrades, you'll have to be really careful though that you don't accidentally move too quickly and fall into one of these little lakes. Next up is some really tough platform, as you now have moving platforms that you have to stand on that are only a couple of steps big. Do your best to make it off of them as quick as possible to the lily pads above, and then jump to the main island itself. 
If you're able to make it through all that platforming, you can pick up some upgrades as you make your way over to the under the island, and then battle a couple more enemies before you have a rematch against the first boss of the game, the Pterodactyl. And this boss is the exact same as the first one we dealt with, so just keep firing as he moves and hovers back and forth, firing out his projectiles slowly, and you can destroy a large amount of them easily. Once he's taken care of, you move on to the next part of level 4. This is a rematch in the ruined city desert type area that we dealt with in stage number 2. During the second segment of the ruined city, there are some really tight corridors to make it through. As you can see, you can barely fit through some of them. Once again, though, you'll have to be very careful of the giant statues to spit the giant waves of fire, especially when you have multiple ones of them lined up and you have all the speed upgrades to really make your maneuvering a little bit tough around them. Wait here for a few seconds for both of the pits to go away before you try to run over it. Thankfully, these stages don't introduce anything new, but with so many of these pitfalls to deal with and all the enemies coming at you, they really test your skill at the game, so hopefully by now you've had enough practice to get used to it. This segment is easily the toughest part of the level as you have a ton of those sand pits to deal with as well as the giant statue shooting fire. Try to get through it and try to maintain as much of your upgrade as possible. Thankfully right at the end here you will be able to upgrade it. Right here try to make it through the last few of the giant statues before we have a rematch against the next boss. The very end has two statues right next to one another so you won't be able to wait in between them in order to get past them. Here we have a rematch against the giant Tyrannosaurus and once again same boss battle as before, just don't stand directly in front of them, keep attacking them and stand just a little bit to the side as long as you have the flame upgrade as you'll be able to hit them, destroy any projectile that comes your way and do a good bit of damage. Once he's taken care of, we move on to 4-3, which is a rematch against the mountain-type mint area, and definitely the toughest platforming we've had to deal with so far. Even a jump like this, where you have to go to either one or two platforms, is almost really tough to get down in the game. I highly recommend taking the path that only has one extra jump instead of having two platforms to jump to before getting there. Stay at the bottom of the screen here so that you can wait for the two giant skeletons to come down before you try to attempt to make your way upwards. Here we have a ton of the skeletons coming to life and charging the bottom of the screen, so just do your best to get in between them. Here you'll have to make a jump over a pit, but you have very, very small area to jump to. Take out as much of the smoke from the volcanoes as you can before attempting to make your jump to the volcanoes. You'll have to jump in between three sets of volcanoes before getting to an open area, but as soon as you land, you have a bunch of enemies that are going to be coming your way. Now comes the toughest platforming in the game, as you have very small platforms and have to make about three or four jumps over the pits in order to get to the opposite side. I've lost a lot of lives and a lot of runs have been ruined by that area, so just try to do your absolute best and be as careful as possible while making it over. If you end up getting hit, thankfully there is an upgrade right to the left before you go into the boss room and have a rematch against the Cobra boss. This disappearing and reappearing boss, the same as before, just be very careful, stand directly in front of him, just slightly to the left or right, so that you can take out the projectiles and do a lot of damage to him.
Once he's taken care of, we move on to the final stage of the game, the fourth part of level four, which is another ruined city type area, but this time we get to face off with the actual final boss of the game. This area is extremely tough, as you'll have a lot of the sand pits to deal with and a ton of the fire statues to deal with as well. They also love to put you in these tight spaces with enemies that like to come directly in your direction, and it's really tough to keep all your weapon upgrades during this stage. The thing is though, thankfully there's nothing new that we haven't seen here, and since this is the third time we've done a ruined city type level, you should have pretty much everything you can throw at you mastered. As you can see, this is pretty much a gauntlet of the giant flame statues as well as those sand pits to fall in, while of course there are some little enemies to deal with as well. After dealing with these last two in a row, it's finally time to enter the last door of the game and the final boss chamber. The final boss of the game is a giant killer bee wasp thing, and it bounces back and forth, firing fireballs as well as little bees. It'll also split up into two and you won't be able to hit it during this segment, or at least not be able to hit the wrong one, I guess. Either way, stay at about the bottom or middle of the screen and do your best to move in between each of the little bugs that he spits out while keep attacking over and over again. I really focus on the small bugs because the projectiles will pretty much get destroyed by my fire projectile, so I really just have to dodge them and not get hit. Once he's been defeated though, just a little tomb plays, just like the previous levels, and then it goes back to level 1-1 and you continue with your same score and can play the game all over again. While The Adventures of Dino Ricky is by no means a fantastic game for the NES or one of those ones you can't miss, the challenge that it does provide in its short few levels is one that you feel great pride when you're finally able to complete the game. After working on the game off and on for quite a few years, I'm quite proud of myself for completing The Adventures of Dino Ricky. And with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.